Four years ago, I created a series of 60 second Final Cut Pro tips called Final Cut Fridays. This was before YouTube Shorts were big, so I published the videos in a horizontal aspect ratio, and they seemed to help a lot of people out. So I took those 60 second or under useful tidbits and put them together in this compilation so you can learn from some rapid fire tips and tricks. Sometimes we want to give our text a little movement on and off screen. So I we'll add a transition to it, but it ends up affecting the whole clip under Underneath. Fortunately, there is a simple fix that I'm going to reveal to you in my new ebook for a low price of $9.99. Uh, kidding, of course. So here's what you'll do. Put your text underneath your clip. Add your transition or transitions to the text. Click the clip that's above it and head up to your inspector window or press the shortcut Command 4. Here you'll click blend mode, go all the way down, and change blend mode to behind. Now you have a clip that's unaffected and a text that is transitioning perfectly. We'll start with some simple tips and work to some more unknown known ones. If you're wanting to play out your timeline, you probably already know that you press spacebar to play. With the J, K, and L keys, you can stop, rewind, and go forward, respectively. So if your timeline is playing out, have three fingers on the J, K, and L key, press the K to stop, use the J key to rewind, and the L key to go forward. If you click the J or L keys multiple times, you can speed up that playback by a lot. Here's a cool tip you may or may not know. If you hold down the K key and then hold either J or L, you can play back in slow motion, either backwards or forwards with the sound playing. So if I'm holding the K key and then I hold down the L key, I can slowly move along. So maybe if I want to line up a sound effect to the exact spot after something in the dialogue, I can efficiently do that. What happens when you get to a point in your project where some big changes are about to be made and you have no idea if you'll end up liking it later on? You can duplicate the project so you can edit the new changes on on one, but the issue is once you edit a multi-cam clip or a compound clip, those changes will be made to both projects. This is where snapshots become really handy. Take a snapshot of your project and it essentially freezes how your project looks at that moment. If you make changes to compound or multi-cam clips, it will not affect the compound or multi-cam clips in that snapshot. It'll even tell you the time and date of the freezing. If down the road you decide, damn, this looks bad, revert to the snapshot that you created and you'll have everything Everything exactly how it was originally. This is really great for making drafts. If you complete a rough edit, take a snapshot. If you do some color grading, snapshot. Sound design, snapshot. That way you have easily accessible references of how your project developed. Recently, someone asked me how to fix an issue that happens to them frequently where they have two clips above their primary storyline that seem to be stuck together. The reason these clips are stuck to each other is because they are grouped together. This grouping of clips allows clips on the secondary storyline to act like how how the magnetic timeline works on the primary storyline. The way we remove this is by selecting your grouped clips and pressing Option Command Up. This removes them from being grouped together and allows you to move the clips around individually. If you want to reapply the group, select your clips and press Command G. If here's something you can implement into your editing process in the early stages of creating your project to help keep everything organized and to help you easily identify what parts of your clips you think are worthy of your edit. It's called favorites. In previous versions of Final Cut, the option for this was in the form of buttons up here, but with the latest versions of the software, you'll need to remember the shortcut for this option. Once you find a section of your footage in your event browser that you like, so say this part is good, so I'll press I for the in point and O for the out point, instead of dragging it to the timeline, I'll press F, F for favorites, and a green bar appears, so whenever you return to the event browser, you know this is the section of the clip that you liked. For ultra easy access, head up here and click favorites so now you can see all of the shots you thought would work for the edit in one place. It's commonly known that we can copy and paste a clip by pressing command C and command V but there is an even quicker way to do this without pressing many buttons. Click on the clip you want to copy, hold down option and drag. Now you've quickly made a copy or copies in no time. While on the topic of copy and pasting, you can copy and paste attributes and effects from different clips by pressing Command C to copy the effects in the clip you'd like to transfer. Press Command Shift V on the clip you want to have those effects and choose the effects you'd like to transfer over. Quick and easy. Let's go over two types of edits that you may find useful while editing. The slip edit and the slide edit. For a slip edit, we'll press T to pull up our trim tool and a little 
little tip here, if you hold down T instead of just pressing it, once you stop pressing the key, it will go back to the previous tool you were using. So I'll hold T and I will drag my clip to the right or left to find a later or earlier part of the clip that I want to be visible in the timeline. Notice that the slip edit does not change the clip's position on the timeline or the duration, it just changes what part of the clip we'll see. For a slide edit, you'll also either press or hold T and click Option while you drag the clip you want to move on the timeline. The slide edit allows you to move a clip between two other clips without creating a gap. Unlike the slip edit, the slide edit does not change the content or the duration of the clip, just its location on your timeline. There may be times when your sound effects or audio are only coming out of one speaker. Here is the ultra quick fix on how to get it to come out of both. So click your audio and head up to the inspector window, go down to audio configuration, and change your audio from stereo to dual mono. Now it'll be coming out of both the right and left speakers equally. Here's another little bonus tip before you go. If you are editing your project with surround sound audio and your sound effect appears to be only playing out of one channel or just the left and right channels, so basically if the sound is stereo audio, open your inspector window with your audio pressed, and head down to pan modes. If you have not seen my in-depth tutorial all about sound design where I go over these modes, I will link that at the end of this video. So click the create space pan mode, and now your audio is converted to fit the surround sound mix. We're going to go over a few simple ways to trim and cut in Final Cut Pro. Some of this is for beginners, but I have a few tips you may not know as well. So to make a cut in your clip, you press B to bring up your blade tool, and click wherever you want to make a cut in your clip. If you press Command B, you can make a cut in your clip instantly no matter what tool you have up. So if I have up my selection tool and I press Command B, I can still make the cut. My all-time favorite way of trimming off the fat of clips is by pressing Option Bracket. So by pressing Option Right Bracket, it'll cut off anything to the right of your playhead position. Option Left Bracket cuts off everything to the left. If you have multiple clips stacked and you want to have them all start or end at the same time, select them all and use the Option Bracket keyboard shortcut. If you have a section of your clip that you want to get rid of, say it's in the middle, press R to pull up your range tool, select the area you don't want, and press the delete button. Last one, I know I'm pushing past a minute here, select the very end or the very beginning of your clip, and if you press period or comma, you can trim or extend your clip by a single frame. If you remember from my video scopes tutorial, going above 100 IRE on the Luma waveform and going below 0 IRE will cause you to lose detail in your image and cause your shot to become unsafe for broadcast. Although we can quickly check to see if we're about to go over these important markers by using our scopes, there is another way that we can double check on the fly without even having scopes up. Go to view, head down to range check, and click Luma. You'll see as I start to raise my highlights close to an unsafe point, zebras will pop up on our screen, letting us know that we should ease back. If we lower our blacks too much, the same thing happens. And if we check to see if these zebras are accurate by pulling up our Luma waveform, you'll notice that the zebras were great. They pop up once we cross those threshold markers of having unsafe values. Now you can be certain your exposure values are okay just by watching your footage play out. So optimizing your media essentially takes your footage and converts it to an easier to work with form of that video with as much image quality as possible. That form is a codec called Apple ProRes 422. Essentially converting to this makes it easier for your computer to handle editing your footage and it'll look good on your screen. The negative to this is that optimizing your media means that your file sizes will become larger. So basically you're trading small file size for editing performance and play back image quality. Personally, I'd recommend optimizing your media, especially if you have the storage, but if you have a pretty fast computer, you can actually get away with not optimizing it, depending on the project, of course. An even better solution to all this is converting your footage to proxy media, and with Final Cut's fairly new updates to proxies, we now have really solid options. Like we talked about last time, clicking optimize media results in your footage being transcoded into ProRes files that show great quality while editing and are easy to edit, but are really large file sizes. If you have a fast computer in storage, this may work for you. My go-to method, and I suggest going this route if you have a slower computer and or you want to keep your file size down, is to choose to transcode your footage to ProRes proxy files. I've found that choosing ProRes proxy at 50% offers really solid performance while editing compared to just editing native camera footage, and it'll save you a lot more space when compared to the large uncompressed ProRes media file.
files. The trade-off here is image quality while editing. So you may notice that your footage doesn't look as good as it should, but remember, these are essentially copies of your original footage. Once you switch to original or optimized footage, which you should do before you export, you'll notice that your quality is still there. If your computer is still struggling with ProRes Proxy at 50%, transcode to a lower quality ProRes Proxy. Once again, this will result in playback image quality being worse, but your file sizes will be even smaller and you'll be able to edit with ease. Today's tips are two ways you can make precise adjustments while editing. The first tip is with your audio. If you want to raise or lower your audio by just a few decibels, it can be annoying to have to go into the inspector window and change it, and it's not entirely precise to try and raise and lower the level on the actual clip in the timeline by moving this bar. That's where this shortcut comes in. With your clip selected, press Ctrl and plus to raise your volume a decibel, and Ctrl minus to lower it a decibel. This is so helpful when you're thinking, ah, this clip is just a little too loud. Control minus once or twice and you have a precise adjustment. Second tip for precise adjustment. If you're wanting to lengthen or shorten a clip's duration, we can click the beginning or end points of the clip and drag. But what if we want to make a precise frame by frame adjustment? Click the end of the clip and press either period or comma to lengthen or shorten by only one frame. We all make mistakes. I'm a little teapot, uh, short and stout. Luckily, there's something built into Final Cut Pro that can help blend cuts together so they appear seamless. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Go into your transition browser and find flow. This transition will help blend a cut together by blending the path of motion of things in your shot from shot one to shot two. It is immensely useful for interviews when your talent messes up, but you don't wanna have to go to B-roll to hide a cut. Now, it's not perfect. If your talent happens to drastically change positions from the end of shot one to the beginning of shot two, it will look like your talent is possessed. However, if your talent doesn't move too much, flow can be incredibly powerful. In my opinion, it's one of the most useful transitions in Final Cut, actually. We have this random stock footage of this older lady. It's not sharp, it's kind of flat, and we're going to turn it into this by isolating our subject by using two simple masks. It's subtle, but it helps our talent to stand out. First, drag the effect sharpen onto your shot. We want to isolate only our subject so she's the only thing in the shot that gets some sharpening. Click the mask button up here and we will add a shape mask. From here, form a long oval mask over your talent and adjust the feathering of the sharpening effect by using this outside circle. If your subject moves a little, then click the keyframe button and skip a few frames to adjust the mask position as your talent moves. Next, add a color board or color wheels to your shot and click add shape mask. Adjust the shape and size and head to the mask options. Press outside so everything outside of our talent is affected and lower the mid-tones ever so subtly. Click inside and raise either our highlights or mid-tones a tad. Now our talent is sharper, she pops out and is the focus of the shot. So you're color grading your film, but you're not exactly sure how you want to grade it, what LUT you'd like to use, if you want an effect on it or not, etc. Here is a quick way to do a nearly side-by-side -side comparison to help you choose the look of your video. I've done a base correction on this shot here, but now I want to stylize it and test out a few LUTs. I find custom LUT in the effects browser and double click, open up my inspector window, and for this tutorial, I will randomly choose a LUT. I will then press option Y to audition this clip. Essentially, option Y duplicates this clip to allow you to make different changes to the clip to try out what works best. So I'll choose another LUT and make any changes I want to the mix or the grade. We'll create another look option, so I'll press option Y and choose a different LUT. To cycle through these options, press control, option, right arrow, or you can do left arrow to go to the left, and you'll switch between these copied audition clips. If this doesn't make sense to you, this should help. So double click right here and you'll see that all of your options are neat side by side for you to choose which one works best. I know a lot of you who watch my videos haven't subscribed yet, so do me a solid, hit the subscribe button, you won't regret it. I post new videos every week about Final Cut and videography. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.